going to be our job to uh, revolutionize the world. Change will only come through the struggle. Hello, everybody. We're here with uh, Robert Waters, Jr. He's an active member of AIM. Uh, Robert, tell us a little bit about AIM and uh, what you're doing with them. Uh, well, a little bit about myself. My, uh, my grandma, her name was Geraldine. I was Janice, and back in the 60s and 70s, before um, our people here called in AIM, they're, they're, they started the Ogala Sioux Civil Rights Organization. She was one of the, the members her along with other people like Grandpa Sievert Young Bear Sr. and Pedro Bisnet and other people, Billy Bean and Lou Bean. So that's how I got involved with AIM. My grandma was uh, one of the older women around the time of 73 when they had to take over. Then uh, whenever they started the march uh, and on February 27th, the anniversary march to, to remember the takeover she would lead, she'll be one of the ones to lead the direction of the south, that's um, Pine Ridge and Ogala, the Ogala people. Then uh, when she died, um, they asked me to take her place. Then uh, about two years ago, we had a protest on Rapid City Regional Hospital. This old man, his name was Vern, uh, Vern, I can't remember his last name, but he's an elder from Eagle Butte. He was diabetic and he was blind and sickly, and he went to heart surgery. And when they brought him out, whenever he got done with surgery, his family came and got him. One of those nurses up there, I think she was part, part native, she uh, told the family, when you go home, take, take pictures. And you got to tell someone, get a lawyer, take pictures. But that's all she said. The family didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah. So when they got home, they looked, they took his shirt off, and they had KKK burnt into his, his torso area, right here, at KKK. Those pictures are on the, the internet, Facebook, and Twitter, and all that stuff. So they organized the march, you know, Chase Iron Eyes, Cody Hall, uh, Ra Robin LeBeau, I think her name is, from Eagle Butte. Then uh, Uncle Dennis Banks came. And, yeah, we had a good protest, but that that morning we started here. We had meetings the days before here at the power grounds, and we gathered over there in the yellow section. And uh, that morning it was about 6 a.m. We gathered up here, the Pine Ridge people, and that morning they gave me the that chanupa to take care of it. So that's how I got involved ever ever since that day. As two years ago, I became uh, the the pipe keeper for our aim here. Even though they're all one one together, you know, the, the aim from, from here, I'm, I'm the pipe keeper. But some of the stuff I wanted to talk about, you know, like my Auntie Deb White Plume and Uncle Alex White Plume, different ones from Anderson area and Porcupine, they're doing protests up by Lower Brew right now. They have a camp up there to protest uh, the Keystone XL pipeline. And the tribe up there, the Lower Brew tribe, they... Uh, I'm not too involved with it, but what I know about it is they they okayed for the pipeline to come through, but by by our 1868 treaty and 1852 treaty, that can't happen because it takes three fourths of the adult male of everyone, you know, and just the Ogala tribe, there's 40,000. Right. And I don't know how much there is at Rosebud and Standard Rock, Shine River, but it needs three fourths of the adult male with everyone to change anything with the treaty and not be against the treaty. And even nowadays, that's one thing too is uh, even the government honoring our treaty rights. You know, the, back in the 80s, the Supreme Court said in court that the uh, Black Kills was taken illegally from our people. But no, nothing ever came from it. Just them acknowledging that that it was taken illegally. 
So if they go by treaty, you know, the all everyone in Africa, they owe us least money. The government, you know, they they don't have that much money to pay our not only our tribe, other tribes too. They owe them from before treaties, and everything like that. You know, the, all the uh, least money and everything under ears. One other thing going on with our tribe now also is they have that that uh, today they had a protest in White Clay. And one thing some of the people from here is trying to do is shut down White Clay. When Teddy Teddy Roosevelt was president, um, there was a buffer zone with the treaty. It was a 45-mile buffer zone. And they wasn't supposed to put like alcohol or anything within 45 miles. But um, when Teddy Roosevelt was president, they... They took that buffer zone away and they shortened it to two miles without asking, without asking our people or, you know, they just took it illegally. We're still battling with that, but, um, so that's how White Clay got put there, two miles, just two miles from the reservation. You know, they make millions, millions of dollars of just right here, you know, our people. You know, so most of some of it is, you know, their own, their own people's fault, you know, so stop drinking with some of them, that's all they know, you know, some people, it's, it is sad, but, you know, that's not, most, just most, some of them, that's all, almost all they know, you know, they grew up with their years and years of alcohol and their family, they think it's normal. And now, do you feel like with what they're trying to do with alcohol there, it's kind of like what they did with uh, inner city black communities with crack cocaine and heroin, trying to make you guys weaker? You hit it right on the button, trying to make our people weaker. Ever since the bottle of Little Bighorn, you know, like our people here, we don't have per cap, we don't have, we don't have a lot of resources, all of the other tribes do. But. That's because we're we're the only one of the only tribes us Lakota, Rapo, Cheyenne, Northern Cheyenne. We we took we beat the American government in battle. So ever since the battle, a little big corn, even Wounded Knee massacre. You know, some people still call it a battle. You know, it's a massacre. But ever since that time, the our people always had a kind of a hard time. You know, they kind of just pushed our people away for years. To the 70s, whenever AIM and everything started, you know, it lit a spark and it went like wildfire. So now, all our ceremonies came back after the 70s. When before, you know, the why some of our people lost the language, you know, in the from the early 20s to the probably the 60s, 70s, they had boarding schools, and our people are. My grandma, you know, that age group, they were beaten, you know, they, they were beaten whenever they speak their language. So whenever they had kids, they didn't teach their kids how to talk because they were afraid that they'll get beat too like they did, huh? you know, speaking their own language. Definitely, definitely. Even their ceremonies, everything was outlawed until they had the uh, longest walk. I'm pretty sure it's the longest walk, the, the original one. And then uh, they had that, um, that's an all our Freedom of Religion Act, I think it's called. Okay. And then that's when we was able to practice their ceremony, even the powwow, you know, the powwows are outlawed, singing, everything, you're thrown in jail. Our people had to sneak at nighttime, you know, to do our ceremonies, do, yeah. even the powwow, you know. They had to sneak and do it to the 70s. Then uh, whenever they first brought it back, the church was involved with it too, they had a, the original power of the 70s, it's about a mile that way, they call it the old Sundance grounds. Okay. In the morning, they had a Sundance till about noon or two o'clock. Then they have to put the Sundances to go out and to have power. Okay. But at the same time with the Sundance, you know, they had all these vendors. They had a Sundance princess contest. Then, uh, you know, stuff like that. They don't, they don't have that nowadays. You know, there's reasons, but... The church, they even used the Bible, you know, one year they, the church had made them do a Bible, what do you call that, a, a mass, is that what they call it for yeah, church, yeah, a mass, yeah, yeah. they had a mass at, at a Sundance, you know, it kind of made a mockery of it. Okay. So after the 73, that's whenever the, 
it came back fully. And that, whenever they had the one here, the with the priest and everything, the priest to walk him in. Okay. Then uh, after that, after the takeover and the seventies, they that's whenever they couldn't pierce before that. They have to use a harness, a rope harness, when they drag their skulls and when they break from the tree, they'll just sit there to rope. Then after, like I said, after Wounded Knee, that's whenever they allowed us to pierce again. Full-fledged piercing. A lot, of, a lot of things to talk about. Hey, everything's coming at once. So I talk about one thing and I'm remembering something else. The government is going around right now trying to, you know, buy back land or say, you know, hey, we're going to give you money for this land, but you can keep it. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And what do you think they're trying to do with that? And what do you think is the outcome that they're aiming for? Oh, it's like I stated earlier, one of my mentors, you know, I really go to him and I uh, use his words, you know, it's uh, words of encouragement. He's not telling me what to do, but I, I do it anyway, you know, because I know it worked out in the end. But just like he said, that's what I, I'm me. I got a, you know, I got a couple acres of land. But one of my other friends, he said, no, I'm gonna wait for the pros and cons to see what happens. But you know, a lot of the people have sold their land. Now they have a lot of people have brand new cars. Some people went all out. They bought, you know, five, six brand new cars. Some of them. Now their money's gone. They don't have no land. You know. Or some of them, you know, they fixed up their house, which would be a good thing, you know, the ones that used it in the right way. To, some of them bought a new house, so it's pros and cons like that. And they made their money, but, you know, once it's gone, it's gone, and they don't have no more land. It's like, you know, no more mineral rights, no more lease money, no more lease check. So that's, you know, it's good and bad like that. But also, like I stated earlier, you know, maybe the government would do that, you know, the buy all the mineral rights and now they own the land so they uh, contaminate the water and uh, then they'll have the only means to purify it and people would have to buy water to survive you know everything needs water not only the people the plants the trees the animals you know they need clean clean water too Definitely. we need it for our ceremonies not only to survive but we also use it in our ceremonies you know that water we call it um Mani we chone, water of life. Everything needs water to live, to survive. Uh, we're getting ready to have more rallies for against the Keystone XL pipeline and trying to save our water also, you know. Uh, a couple months ago, I think it was February or March, this company got a license to drill mine uranium in the Black Hills. You know, that's against our treaty also because in the treaty, it states it's the supreme law of the land, and we still we're still the original landowners. We never gave our land away, but the people in Rapid they still, you know, they they treat us funny when we go up there. You know, there's racism up there, and they have what do you call them? Slam sheets or like dirt sheets? They okay. going around up there now. They have KKK and everything and. They're sending sheets around up there at the different bookstores in the mall, yeah. saying bad stuff about our ways, you know, calling us devil worshippers. There's even a couple stores up there, they sold t-shirts. One said, my Indian name's Drinks Like Fish. Had a man crawling with X's in his eyes and it had a fish with X in his eyes with beer on it. Yeah. You know, some people thought it was funny, you know, most of the people, you know, took offense to it. Definitely. Definitely. You know, there's just little, some stuff that seems petty to some people. The, the other aim, they're working against that, uh, the Redskins. You know, that's uh, Clyde Balcord and the Minnesota Ames and different ones over the hour. They're working to get rid of the, have the Redskins change their name. You know, some people think that's a petty thing, but, you know, for years, if you look in the dictionary, it, Redskin is a racial slur against our people. I may be mistaken, I think it means uh, Indian scalp. Okay. Whenever they would get Indian scalps, they'll call them Redskins. Okay. Now I got a Redskin, you want to buy this, you want to trade this, you know, back in the fruit trader days, late 1800s. Yeah. You no, know, yeah, I never really took offense to it till I learned about it, you know. Then I kind of got mad, you know. Yeah. Some people don't think it's too bad, but. 
How do you feel about all this knowledge and all this education and all the things that are being held from us? It seems like they try to, you know, spread misinformation, disinformation, and then any information or like you were talking about um, your culture, you know, like how they try to tramp that out. Uh, you know, like what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's kind of sad, you know, like earlier I was talking with you about the suicide epidemic that people had about three years ago. And um, me and my mom worked with uh, some other people, one of my cousins, and one of my other aunties, you know, we kind of headed that up. Whenever the, the attempt suicide, we'll go save them, talk to them. Some of the ones we didn't save, you know, we had to hug the mom. And, but uh, we'll do these talks, these uh, assemblies in all the schools. And one of them, it was sad, you know, it was a room full of kids, you know, about 300, 300 all ages, you know, kindergarten to high school. And we asked them, you know, how much do you know how to pray? And not even a quarter of those kids raised their hand. And then after that, we asked, you know, how much of you, how many of you want to learn how to pray? And that whole room raised their hand. And uh, that's one way we saved our people from the suicides. Whenever um, they'd attempt to bring the boys to me, and the, the girls would have the females, I don't know, my mom or my aunties would talk with them. We we'll take them in the sweat lodge. I will show them how to um, burn sweet grass and say it. We'll show them how to pray. One, this boy, they brought him over, and one of my brothers, he was having a hard time. You know, he was, he wasn't gonna do it, but he was, you know, he was having, he was real down, you know, down and out. So I told him, hold on, you know, sit here. They're bringing someone over. I want you to listen to this. So they brought this young boy over. He's about 14, 13. They brought him over, you know. He was trying to attempt, you know, he had a hard life, you know, he lived with alcohol and he went around different homes and different homes, you know. His, uh, he wasn't with his parents, you know, he'll go with them on the weekends, but he'll stay in town, you know, different families. He got moved around and finally he got, they put him with one of my cousins, so she brought him over. So I was talking with them and my brother was sitting there at the same time, you know, and uh, so I, I told her, you know, I'm going to show you how to pray. So I did, you know, I let that sweet grass, I gave him his own braid. To him, you know, you, when you pull that smoke on you, it's not just emotion, you're not just going like that. You say a prayer. And you say, you know, God, to God, you know, clear my mind, help me, I'm having a hard time. You know, everything goes away. I told him, smudge his house. And uh, the next day after that, my cousin came over and said, Robert, it worked, you know. This morning he woke up and he was smudging, you know, he was praying. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's yeah. one way, one way we, we fix the suicide. Definitely, definitely. And also, you know, with your question, what you asked, that's what it came down to, you know. The, um, a lot of our kids, a lot of them don't know how to pray. Okay. Either way, you know, one thing my grandma taught me, you know, don't matter how you pray, as long as you're praying, as long as you believe in that higher power, you know your life would be good. Definitely, definitely. So that's what I grew up with. But I was more fortunate than uh, most of the people who grew up on the reservation, you know. There's some people on this reservation that put down our own people, our ancestors, you know. And they go just, they're just strictly church. But at the same time, you know, they put down our ways. They call our, their own people, they call us devil worshippers, you know. There it is. You know, it came down to that. Some of our peoples, they're all, all like that, you know. It's, whenever our people come back together, put all the jealousies, everything aside, that's when our people will strive again, will become the great, the great Lakota nation we once were. Even the soldiers back then, if you look at some of their, uh, some of their uh, journals, they talk about our people, you know, they're called, first warriors, they called us the best horsemen in the world, the Lakota. Lakota, Shan, Rapo, they call us the best horsemen in the world. So, you know, they, they knew, they knew. Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh -huh. And now, whenever you're talking about how, you know, your own people are fighting you, do you think this is another tactic, you know, by the by Uncle Sam and the U.S. government to, uh, to divide and conquer? When they first moved our people on the reservation from the stories told to me by my elders, they were scared of our people. You know, because our people, we had that respect for each other. We knew 
everyone knew their place, and we lived in harmony. We lived in harmony with all the elements, all nature, all the animals. You know, we all lived in harmony. Then, whenever our 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 structure was the chiefs, you know, the, we had our own uh, government structure like that. Then they moved us to this new structure, you know, this new form of government. It don't work. You know, they came they came over from Europe with the same bad feelings. You know, they were escaping. What do you call it? Persecution and Definitely, yeah. And then, you know, they came over trying to get away from that and they ended up doing the exact same, same thing, thing yeah. done to them. Yep. To our people. You know, they talk about that shooting was a couple years ago with those kids, they called that the worst massacre. Okay. But then if you look at the wounded knee massacre, there was hardly any men there. It was all women and children. And old old men, old women, elders. They disarmed them, you know, the night before. The that night, all the soldiers, they got drunk off whiskey, you know. They got like, real drunk, you know. The that morning, they rode in and they used that Gatlin gun and murdered our people. After um, Sedenbu was killed, they murdered Bigfoot's people. After Sedenbu was killed, then the people fled and they came down here to seek refuge with Red Cloud and Little Wound down here in Pine Ridge. And they were stopped at Wounded Knee. They're not sitting there disarmed and everything happened the next morning. Yeah. That's one thing, you know, I always wanted to talk about because even on TV and everything, they still call it bottle wounded knee. I was watching um, Pawn Stars one time and this white guy brought in a little beaded vest and he got ripped off. <laughs> you know, that, that guy who was watching that, then they also brought in another show, on the same show, another episode, they brought in that Gatlin gun. Yeah. And they called it bottle oh, yeah. wounded knee. You know, I kind of got mad, you know, yeah, because it wasn't a bottle; it was a massacre. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Women, children, every. The, you know, it was real sad. They were just slaughtered. You know, even some of the women they're pregnant. Some of those women they cut the babies up. And the newborn babies, the soldiers would grab them, throw them in the air, and shoot at them like a, like those discs they throw. And they, they fail to ever mention any of this. Uh, they, that's the part that they leave out. And in their history books, they make the Indian sound like the bad man. Yes. When he was fighting to save our way of life, you know, fighting for, for the safety of women and children and the earth, everything, our ways of life. And they were labeled hostiles. You know, shot on first sight, hostiles. Yeah. We all got to become one, put down our... You know, our little jealousies, our little bickering. We all got to become one. One saying our people have is Mitakuye Oyasi. We're all related, everyone. The animals, all nations, we're all related. We're all one. We're all human beings.